Okay, let's bring in Invesco's head of North America Investment Grade Credit, Matt Brill. Matt, great to have you with us. Thanks, thanks for having me. The flows have been big, and it's been from both institutional as well as retail investors. Um, where are you seeing this money go to sector-wise? So for the last uh, month, I'd say we're seeing inflows. You've seen about eight weeks, actually, of, of consistent inflows. And it's been going everywhere but the banks. And that's where everybody's been trying to avoid. Uh, you know, after Silicon Valley, everybody couldn't really analyze the situation. And it was sort of one bank after another and who would be next. Um, but now we're actually getting to the point where the banks are starting to come back. And that's where we see a lot of value right now. And, and what makes you think there's value there? Why are you going against the crowd on this one? And what kind <laughs> of banks? Well, because, you know, eventually, you know, you, you have to have the banks perform. You have to have a financial system that's functional in order for the overall markets to perform. So if the banks are not working and then eventually you're going to have problems everywhere else. Um, we're looking at the big six banks, you know, the, the J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley's of the world that are yielding close to five and a half percent for 10 years. And you're looking at the super regionals that are yielding somewhere between eight and 12 percent for just two to five years. So a lot more jump to default risk there. Concerns about whether they make it through the next several months. Um, if they do, they should make it through the next several years. Um, so for our, from our standpoint, you know, that, that provides value. And, and it's, uh, it's a tough trade, but it's starting to get a little bit of traction. It's Karen, thanks for coming on. I'm sorry, are you saying the regional banks' debt or the bit larger investment bank, the larger banks? So, so the, the safest but still significantly yielding banks um, are the big six banks. You, know, you can get reasonable returns there. But in the regional banks, the super regional banks, the banks that have market caps of 10 50 $100 billion, Charles Schwab just did a deal last week. It was the first non-GSIB bank to come to market. It's going to thaw out things for the rest of the, 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 the banking space. And we think that that's going to be a good thing overall. Um, we're not out of the woods yet, but we're starting to see a lot of signs that there is value and, and there's, there's certainly some, some opportunity there. So how, let's go to the regional, the this, this sort of scary ones. How big is that <laughs> discount? How much do you think that gap can close? So you, you've got names like the key banks and fifth thirds of the world that are trading 400 basis points over um, that historically were closer to 100, 150. So um, you know, that they were in line to inside on a credit spread basis to where the you know, the, the big six um, were trading, and now they're, they're three times it. So, you know, will they get all the way back? You know, probably not. We think there's real, some, some real permanent damage here, but just nobody wanted to touch this for the longest time. Um, you know, the, the Charles Schwab deal is a very good sign to get through the market. Um, there's been a lot of other, like, big banks, super regional banks, people that actually have debit cards in their wallet. Those are the banks that are now having, having conversations uh, with investors and saying, look, our credit spreads are at levels we, 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 are, we are a little bit nervous with. And we can't live there forever. How do we get you comfortable with us? And they're really walking investors through things. And if you look under the hood, you know, they're really not that bad. Matt, I have a, just sort of a housekeeping question. If the U.S. gets <laughs> its, um, its, its credit rating downgraded, that puts a ceiling, I would assume, on, on whatever highest rating a company can get. So how does that cascade lower if there are some companies out there which, will then, which would then have a higher rating than the U.S.? Would they automatically have to be downgraded? Sure. So you see that in the EM world where, where that will happen in the U.S., that that is not necessarily the case. You know, we have instances right now, actually, where there's some corporate credit debt that's trading at a lower yield um, than the government. And that's all based around the, uh, you know, the, the debt ceiling and then the, the, the question of whether they're going to pay these T-bills on time that are coming up due and on June 1st as well as June 6th and then after that. Um, so, you know, you've got large corporations that their board meetings are not discussing whether or not they're going to be paying their debt. And that's essentially what's happening in the U.S. So, you know, we do think you get a debt ceiling resolution, but there's a lot of corporations out there that, that honestly, over the next several months, I have a higher confidence that they're going to pay us on time um, than, than, than the U.S. government.